Number five. All right, so we have um, a small lady punch biopsy. And in the upper reticular dermis, there's a lot of these dilated kind of cannonball vessels. Um, they don't look flat. They're not really like fibrin. There's a lot of um, red cell extravasation in some areas. And hemosiderin, too, so probably like a chronic. For like a pigmented so probably just like a venous stasis type picture. Yeah, good. So I think these are great example of stasis vessels, right? And um, as you get vascular stasis, usually the lower legs, and most people have, most adults have at least some degree of this, but this is pretty prominent. Like you said, the vessels are clustered together um, and, and make these little lobules, and they have thick walls. Their endothelial cells are very plump usually. And just they're, they're the same kinds of, they're basically the normal capillaries in the papillary dermis that have just gotten really thick and kind of tangled up as, as they've had constant back pressure from the poor venous flow. And so um, they make these lobules. They often have fibrosis in the background. They often have hemosiderin and extravasated red blood cells. Like you said, they don't, um, they don't often have a ton of inflammation, although remember that you know, a lot of times people have stasis and then they get kind of a stasis dermatitis, which is probably what's going on here because see there's sponge derm over it. So when I see sponge derm on the lower leg, uh, there's often stasis under it. And so I have a, you know, a kind of a code that says that sponge and there's stasis. So it could be stasis derm, could be contact plus underlying stasis, could be any combination of sponge derm plus stasis and how much the stasis is contributing to the dermatitis itself is variable. And like you said, the pigmented purpura is the other thing that can look kind of like this, but the big, and, and can coexist with this sometimes too, but I want to see more lymphocytes and pigmented purpura uh, usually than here. But there are some EOs scattered in here, and I promise you, on any lower leg biopsy, if you give me a biopsy from the shin, I will find you an eosinophil, usually multiple. I don't know. I kind of wonder if it's like a special site for EOs. I swear there are always eosinophils there, like always. So I think probably what it is is that when people get rashes there, they're putting some sort of, you know, salve or, or cream or essential oils on it, and then it gets some sort of a contact component to it. So anyway, that's a nice example of stasis vascular changes. And occasionally this can be so severe that it begins to get a lot of spindled fibroblasts in the background, and then it can mimic Kaposi sarcoma, both clinically and microscopically. Or, so that pseudo Kaposi sarcoma uh, pattern, we call that acroangiodermatitis, which is basically just a severe form of stasis, and you can easily do an HHV8 stain. This does not look like like that to me, really. It doesn't really look like a cat to see, but I would not fault someone if they had trouble. Just do the stain, and you can easily sort it out, but usually you can tell the part on HHV.